Welcome again to another session of Beyond the Title, where we speak with exceptional professionals with extraordinary experience. Joining us today is Christoph Honenfelder from Flaconi Group. Christoph, how are you doing and welcome. Hi, Steve. Nice to be on the show. I'm good. I'm good. In beautiful Great. Berlin, it's sunny, so life could be worse. <laughs> Great to have you. And I do see this lovely uh, slogan behind you, rise like a phoenix. I is this in your office now? Yeah, that's in our office. We have basically all of our meeting rooms. They have kind of like a theme. We have like a Marilyn Monroe meeting room and a Kylie Jenner meeting room. And uh, this is the Rise Like a Phoenix room. So there's themes there. Actually, the next one would, would have been even nicer because it's the disco room, right? You have like, I think, 12 disco balls on top of the ceiling, etc. Oh. So would have been more appropriate for this. But Those here are those are mood setting rooms now chris before we start off i just want to quickly ask you know flaconi group right it is uh based out of germany but can you tell us a bit more of what the company does and a bit more on what you do so basically flaconi is um, a multi-brand um, online beauty retailer and by online we're not really exactly a pure online player as we have do have three flagship doors in germany and we intend to you know, potentially have even more than that. But we are, you know, as a company, we're an online business, um, beauty retail, we're in Germany, uh, Austria and Poland at the moment. Um, we finished last year with uh, 300 million uh, uh, sales. Um, uh, yes, and we love it to be in the beauty industry. It's from our perspective, obviously one of the most exciting and, and most beautiful industries to be in. Um, yeah, and we are, you know, we are uh, in Europe, um, so we aspire to be one of the leading players in Europe um, next to our uh, beautiful competitors, Sephora and Douglas, of course, um, which are our inspiration in, uh, you know, competing with them. Um, yeah, and we're doing, uh, having obviously a good time at the moment because obviously the whole Corona situation was a kind of like a booster. Yes. It didn't really change the overall business dynamics that we're growing substantially and being very successful, but obviously it accelerated the, the development over the last 12 months. Awesome. Now let's get it, get to know you better. Christoph, uh, my first question to all my guests is always, what is it that motivates them? What is it that pushes them to be who they are, get out of bed early morning, uh, you know, or stay late at nights doing what they do with the passion that they have for years and decades, right? So what is your ikigai? And I, and I assume you mean in a professional way, right? Because I would always answer, right, it's my kids which really drive me and, and that's the whole inspiration in life um, overall, right? Or my family and friends um, uh, uh, to take a bit of a broader perspective. When I look at it, you know, business-wise from a professional perspective, what's driving me is always, you know, it's trying to move something forward, to shape something, to create something uh, in a business environment. Um, and in the sense of, you know, in, in Flaconi, it's really to create this, you know, moving from a transactional econ business to become really a European leader in beauty, to become um, uh, uh, the driving force in the industry when it comes to, uh, you know, being on top of things, being on top of trends and really be from a consumer perspective, the place where consumers look first when they think about beauty. Right? And that's also somehow, you know, this everything beauty, which is the name of our of our strategy is a bit um, touching on this really create a place where consumers when they think about beauty when they stand in there in their bathroom in the morning when they look at the medicine cabinet when they think about beauty you know they should think flaconi right and that's basically you know what what you know drives me to the office or what uh, is the first thing on my mind when i think about um, my professional uh, a life that's what drives me right creating this really driving this always being a leader in, in topics um, introducing new uh, new topics to the consumers and really creating this kind of like place where every consumer right and beauty is has a tendency of being selective right there is this Unfortunately, situation, yes. right? but we want to be very democratic and we want to be there right for every consumer right when every consumer no matter what beauty is for 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 this specific consumer, we want to be there and basically have the right products, the right services, and be the right place for them to come, to feel beautiful, to find the right products for them, um, and that's what's driving not only me, but I, you know, more or less the whole Flaconi organization. Awesome, awesome, wow. Uh, the second question, that, uh, and I'm hoping you you touch upon the the writing behind you. Now, if life were a movie, what character would you like to play? <laughs> 
So you mean besides being James Bond from time to time and, and, and being course. those characters? I mean, that's obviously first, right? No, but after that, I think, you know, and that's um, some, something which again touches a bit on what I said, it's, you know, I like, I like real life inspired character and characters in movies, which had an impact on society, humanity, or the world overall, right? So, and, and, and saying this, coming back to this Everything Beauty, I, I, I like seeing, you know, Flaconi as a company in, um, as, as a company that has an impact on, on everyone's life in the sense of really being there for, for you, right? What you find uh, need as a product or need as a service to feel beautiful and, you know, feeling beautiful automatically means feeling more self-confident and more confident in life. And I think, you know, achieving this besides all this, you know, being successful and obviously, you know, growing, et cetera, et cetera, but having this and, and the, at the back of your mind that really from a diversified point of view for everyone out there, being there to help them to feel more self-confident and to feel, you know, better about themselves in life. I think that's something which uh, which drives me. And again, coming back to the movie thing, right? This means, you know, real life inspirations for for, for people which had an impact on others, uh, others, uh, other people' uh, lives and achieving something from that perspective. And I don't have any specific character in mind um, uh, at that point, but those are characters which you know. I can relate to, um, I feel comfortable, um, I, I like those stories where people have an impact on others, uh, other people's lives, a positive impact. Uh, touching on real life stories, uh, recently Netflix has been developing these docu-series which touch upon the current trends, current events, but from the perspective of, let's say, some of the celebrity speakers and some of the everyday person. Right. Uh, amendment is a, is a nice one that, that just came up uh, recently, but they've had a number of those in the past as well. Uh, are you a Netflix watcher? Are, are you Amazon Prime? All of the above, of course, right? I mean, in the pandemic, <laughs> even more so than before. Yes, yes, I'm a Netflix and, and Amazon Prime. I'm not sure I've seen a lot of those um, documentaries, to be honest, um, but overall, heavy user of Netflix and Amazon Prime. And Apple Plus, and you know all of the, you know. <laughs> Who, who's your favorite James Bond? Still Sean Connery. I think for, for me, he's the manifestation of um, being this cool, out there, you know, <laughs> confident, manly kind of like um, super spy. So awesome. It's still awesome. Oh, uh, I, I still rewatch his Highlander, the first movie that he came out with back in the day, and a number of his, his awesome uh, movies in the past as well. He's an awesome guy. Come on. He, uh, with that lovely accent, why not, right? <laughs> um, yeah, by the way, I was hoping you would touch upon Harry Potter with the rise, uh, rise like a phoenix behind you, just because uh, the phoenix is supposed to come to those who are true at heart and, of course, courageous. Which I it's, think it, it's does. true. It's true, but you know, I mentioned you know, with the the quote doesn't really relate anything to me or to Flaconi, right? So there's a bit of a disconnect <laughs> there, to be honest. So I'm a bit careful with this uh, with this quote, but yes, <laughs> makes sense. The phoenix makes is, sense. Uh, is no, no, makes sense. Um, in the hustle of things, which app allows you to stay sane and structured? Um, I could now easily say, hey, the, the Netflix app, right, is giving me a break from time to time. No, I think, you know, there, there is one, you know, I'm, 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 I moved away from using paper um, as much as I can. So I'm using NoteShelf as an app on my um, on my iPad nice. to basically manage all my notes and to do's and etc. So that's definitely one which is helping me, um, you know, to keep um, as much structure as I can to to um, to topics. And the other thing I, I have to admit, I'm 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 an addict, not an addict, but I, I play, you know, Sudoku. The the of course the the number game. So I have a couple of, of Sudoku apps on my on my iPad, which you know when I'm flying or traveling, right? Which um, you know give me a break from anything else. So if you want to get your mind um, uh, concentrated on something else, then whatever you're thinking about, right? For me, that's a perfect uh, way of doing this. So I think NoteShelf and Sudoku is 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 the two apps which save me. On, on have you talked? Have you taught Sudoku to the kids yet? So my kids are five and three, right? So obviously too early, too early. But even though my, my, my son he's he's five now, and of course you know 
you know, sometimes he sees me right with, with it and he's all very interested in it, but it's a bit too early for him to to really. Of course, of course. Get in there. Now, if he did start doing Sudoku, I think there'd be, you know, lines of people be outside your door going, so we are thinking about career plans for this child. <laughs> to be the next genius that we need. Uh, <laughs> no, but brilliant uh, that you do do Sudoku. Uh, a huge past sum of mine. And uh, what I've heard also, uh, President Barack Obama does do Sudoku and Scrabble. Yeah, I didn't know that. Uh, things we have in common with fam famous people out there. <laughs> yeah. um, right, now, we spoke of this uh, a little towards uh, our, our last call. Um, you know, you are leading a team. We have been in these crazy times. Mental stress, mental health became a huge focus for team leaders, for uh, board members also to make sure that their employees, that their colleagues were had a place to to address these questions uh, had a place to be able to share their challenges as well how is it happening in flaconi but also with you and your team how are you helping with you know mitigate some of these stresses also for yourself not just for your team also for yourself yeah so first of all obviously you know this this whole pandemic kind of like in, in mental health issues with everybody being at home being stressed with a million things happening at home while you're trying to work or um, uh, and so on and then i think you know for me personally i think that's the same for for a lot of people is you know this whole time has shown you how effective and efficient you can work right with being you know not necessarily meeting in person for a lot of topics etc cetera, etc cetera. but on the other hand you know obviously it has has made the the, the barriers between personal life and business life um, a lot more blurred right and frankly i think especially people who were already working a lot before right they have the tendency to work even more now right because there is no boundaries sure. anymore right and you are um, uh, having all those calls and I my personal feeling is that that an hour call is much more intense than an hour meeting if you if you're really meeting face to face right so yes obviously there is you know the big question what kind of impact it has uh, and so on and I think there's a couple of things that every one of us can do individually and then there's a couple of things that companies can do to to mitigate this right so first of all uh, and you mentioned this is you know creating an environment where, where people feel free to you know to be spoken about, you know, if they feel, you know, something's not right, or if they feel overloaded, or if they feel, hey, you know, I need more space for myself, or it's not the right balance anymore. I think that's the most important thing that you create this environment where people really um, don't feel ashamed or don't feel, you know, uh, uneasy, right, um, uh, when they when they mention those topics. So that's for me the most important one. The second one, structurally as a company, you can define things, you know, how um, uh, that people um, get the freedom they need, right? So for us, it's, you know, Friday afternoons, right? We have focus time or we have every every uh, day over uh, over the, the, the lunch period, we have focus time where we, um, basically the rule is to have no meetings, not only no, no Zoom meetings, right? But no meetings at all. Um, obviously, you know, this is not working perfectly all the time, but at least, you know, it does work to a certain extent and gives people, okay, that's a time where I can concentrate on work or do something else or take care about the kids or, you know, whatever, uh, you know, uh, feels, feels right. Um, we also have a discussion, you know, if we should have a full day in the week, right, where we'll have all, no Zoom meetings, right? You still have calls, right, but no Zoom meetings because, again, right, it is more intense yeah. to have this than just a call or face-to-face -face meeting. So there are certain things that you can do as a company to do so. Um, and then the, the third thing for me is now that, at least in Germany or in a lot of the European countries, we, we s oh, seem to see the end of the tunnel, right? And, and, and they, we have discussions on how, how much we are opening the office again and, and so on, right? And I'm in the office today here and we see more and more people coming back to the office. It's still, you know, you have to check in, right? And you have reserved tables and so on. But I do believe, you know, getting back to a stage where you do have at least a couple of your meetings face to face again, where you do spend a day a week or so in the office, physically meeting people, etc. That makes a difference for your mental kind yeah. of like, right? You have the social interaction, you have uh, a little chat over a coffee with a colleague, right, in, in, in the kitchen and so on. So I do think that that's um, the third layer for me that we have to come back slowly to a stage where I do not believe that we will go back to a five-day 
in the office work week ever again, right? <laughs> At least for Flaconi. But I think the hybrid model is a good one, right? And it doesn't matter if it's two days or three days or, you know, however, I think that's an individual um, decision for every business to take. But I think the hybrid model is a very healthy one where you find your, sure. your space where you work from wherever, right? Where you feel more comfortable, uh, most comfortable and, and, and like to work. Um, but then also have time in the office where you can interact with your colleagues, get to know your colleagues. And specifically for more strategic topics or change management topics, I think you need to be, you know, together in a room and, uh, you know, really yeah. uh, talk about those topics. It's a bit Very of a lengthy, well. answer. It's a leng lengthy answer, but I think for me, it's those uh, three pillars. These lengthy answers are very important, especially as we're going into reshape, you know, in September. Uh, a lot of the leaders we have seen are very, very involved in this process of the business. Uh, they want to make sure that their people are taken care of, that the employees are getting all the support they can get. And you're right, you know, the best thing that we could have learned from uh, from this particular time was that people are motivated and are engaged to the business. They just now are getting a lot of support in being able to do so from home or anywhere they are at. Uh, so you're not just tied down to a country anymore or tied down to a particular place. You could be living in, in the rural areas in Germany in this case and still work as effectively as you would if you had this, the support structure to do so. so. Thank you. Okay. Uh, what was your first job? No, this is going back to you know your first job. What was that like? What is the one lesson you take from there? You know, till today. <laughs> my first job. So you know, I didn't really want uh, knew what I wanted to do with my life. So I went into consulting, right? Which was basically the one thing where you didn't really have to commit to anything. So I joined um, BCG Boston Consulting Group with a plan to do this for two years and then do like my dad always used to say to do something real afterwards. Um, <laughs> no, but you know, I, I ended up spending almost five years, four and a half years with them. I right? had, a, you know, at the end of the day, great time. And I would always do it again because you do get a very broad perspective because you look into different companies, into different topics, etc. So it gives you a very, you know, good perspective on a lot of topics. It's a conceptually, intellectually very challenging environment. It's, you know, obviously very smart people working there and so on. So I would always do it again. I, I'm not sure if I would do it as long again or if I would leave a bit earlier, right? I, after two years, I took a sabbatical for four months and traveled through Asia for four months backpacking with the goal to do something else afterwards. Because, but of course, I you know, went back and then had a great, you know, very international projects, et cetera, et cetera. And then you always have the next carrot in front of your nose to get promoted, et cetera. So they do a pretty good job in doing that. Um, no, so I would always do it again. I, even though I have to say the first three months were very tough, right? I have to say, because it was, you know, I, I did an internship with them before, so I knew what I was getting into, but it was still, it was tough, right? It was long working hours, you know, I think in the first week or the second week, the senior partner really screamed at, not particularly at me, but the whole team, because we had a very bad presentation in front of the CEO of the of our client and so on. So it was really, it was a bit of a tough start, but um, very good experience. And again, I would always do it again. And, and so it should be, right? It's all formed the person that you are today and how you present to the board as well. So yeah, it makes you, yeah. It, it gives you a different perspective and you, you, you um, get acquainted with, um, you know, stressful situations really early on and you, you also learn how to handle them in a, in a good way. So I think that's a very important lesson that you get early on there. Brilliant. Um, this question, I'm hoping you're going to answer with, with what you did in the US and, and your travel from, right? <laughs> but what's the one unique fact about Christoph? that we should all know about? The one you need, oh, that's, a, that, that's such a tricky one, right? Because, you know. There's so much. I'm not sure. I think, you know, it's very individual and I, I'm always struggling with, you know, how, how interesting things are really about myself for, for, or for everyone. I think it's the same for, for, for other people. Um, 
the interesting fact, I mean, there's some fun stories that I had to do my driver's license uh, test three times because I basically failed it uh, three times, uh, even though I was driving even before for a year because I had a US license when I came back to Germany. So I was allowed to, to drive. So, but there are some fun stories like this. But other than that, I think, you know, um, important to know about myself is I'm a very, you know, it's always family and friends first, right? Good. First above anything else right so that's something which you you have to know about myself and other than that yeah it's funny stories like you know i i had this and i think that's what you're relating or mentioning is i had a little stint as ceo of kali jenner cosmetics um uh, uh, last uh, early last year from january to june which was a very interesting you know um time in the sense of, you know, between LA, you know, staying with the Kardashian family for, for a certain period with, you know, everything uh, that comes with it, traveling a lot between LA and Paris where the um, joint venture partner Cody was located and then still the family being in, in, in Germany. So quite an interesting time, lots of stories, which I um, can tell everyone, you know, in a more one-to-one -one setting if, if someone's interested. And if you want to hear more about the lovely stories from Koti, the Jenner family, the Kardashians, and of course, how Christoph, you know, took out that lovely project uh, with, with the Jenner Cosmetics, uh, do catch him at Reshape. Uh, that's a small segue into that. But uh, I'm, I'm hoping I, I will catch you uh, in one of our, our awesome social social gatherings we do even on virtual platforms just to catch up on you know how it was to have those sit down meetings with kylie jenner uh Cody, and i'm guessing there are a few other people involved just because it's a brand aspect of it as well right not just the 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 actual cosmetics no i think you know i i think there's there's very you know a lot of opinions about the the kardashians and jenners and what they do out there right so the one thing that you can say is they are extremely professional and they're really, you know, speaking about Kylie Jenner and, and Kylie Cosmetics, right? It's a very authentic story, right? And it's really, sure. she's fully behind that, right? And if you look at the business is, the one thing that with Kylie is basically, especially in the US, right? Everyone could see her growing up in, in the TV show, Keeping Up With The Kardashians. I think in the first right. season, she was 10 years old, right? So you really, you could see her growing up in, in the TV series. And what you could see there is her personal development and really at some stage using cosmetics and makeup specifically, right, to creating her personality, right? It's really part of her story. And that's why the whole thing is not only, you know, she's not a poster child for the product or the brand. It's really authentic. It's really her passion, right? And she would, if she wouldn't be a, a you know, Kylie Jenner and if she wouldn't have her own brand, she would pro probably be one of the best makeup artists in the world, right? Because she really she knows the product. She's, it's really her passion makeup. It's, it's, you know, something that she stands for. And that's also why, you know, I believe the whole thing is so successful because the consumer realizes, hey, it's not only a story. It's really an authentic story where the, the person is really behind that. She really believes in the product. She understands the product and something. And that's something which you can find in, in a lot of topics there. And they're very professional. They're very authentic for this specific story. And as you can feel, it's really heartfelt and they're, they're really in it with their, with their blood. And Kylie is very passionate about every little detail of, of, of the business. And that's something which is great to work with, obviously. And, and the brand has a lot of potential going forward to become really a global beauty brand, um, which will be very successful for sure. And from there, my last question to you, Christoph. What has been the most proudest moment of your professional life when you said, yes, I've made it? When did that happen? When was that, that shift in mindset? It hasn't happened so far. I'm, you know, <laughs> it hasn't happened. No, I'm, you know, I'm always, you know, I'm, I'm never really, I'm, I'm, I'm never really satisfied, I have to say, you know, I, I, I'm proud about, you know, some things that we achieved, you know, and it was never me, it was always a team or a company which achieved a certain goal. And I think I have this, you know, starting with BCG, obviously, you know, we, we worked, for instance, at, um, at a big um, sporting good company we created from BCG it was a strategic project to create like a, a brand line where the most globally, the most important products were in this brand line and were then the focus of everything. Right. And 
you know, we worked on it for six months and then, you know, for the, ne for the next season, it be really became a big success for the company, right? So that was the first time I really had the feeling, hey, my work that I was involved in, right, I had a, um, a part in, right, really made an impact for the business, right? was, was really successful. And I think, you know, along, uh, along my professional career in, in, in Chibo, right, where we achieved really 2% uh, percentage point increase um, in our margins, right, building on the sourcing strategy that I and or the team implemented, et cetera, right? In Douglas, right, we improved our private label share from 3% to 10% um, with all the positive impacts on margins and differentiation, et cetera. So there are those things where I think, hey, we achieved really a positive impact for the business. We created something new. We developed something which was successful from a consumer perspective then and so on. Um, I wouldn't consider this to be proud moments for myself, to be honest. I think I'm proud about the results, but other than that, I'm proud if my son, you know, um, swims, you know, for the first time alone and so on. Those are proud moments for me. In business life, I'm I'm proud about a result, um, but it's a different feeling, I would say. Of course, and, and as it should be. Now, thank you so much, Christopher, for sharing that with us, for sharing, you know, your personal experiences, your personal side of your life, which I haven't had the chance to actually ask you in our last few calls. Thank you so much. No, you're welcome. Hey guys, for all of you, thank you so much for joining us today. We are back in every Thursdays, uh, 10 a.m. C sorry, 10 a.m. CET, 5 p.m. SGT. Do join us. Till then, stay safe, stay healthy. Speak to you soon.